Application Programming Interface or APIs is one of the most commonly asked interview questions in most of the tech interviews. And it is also one of the questions which really strikes a lot of fear in the hearts of students because they think it's a very complicated concept. Let me tell you, I also used to feel the same when I began my career as a software engineer. My friends, welcome to TAP Academy. My name is Rohit and in today's video, we are going to understand what is APIs and why is it so important for software development. Before I proceed with the video, I would highly recommend you guys to like and subscribe to the channel so that you can stay updated with the latest content. Without wasting time, let's get started. I would like to begin by giving you some examples so that you can understand where APIs are being used in the real world. Friends, if in case today you were to take out your phone and try to book a cab. Please understand on Uber when you book a cab, Uber is using something called as Google Maps API. Yes, if you were to go to Amazon, buy a product and try to pay for it, while paying for the product, there is a high probability that Amazon is using either Stripe's API or Razorpay's API or Google Pay's API. Why all that, my friends? If in case you go to TAP Academy's uh, coding platform, which we call as Thai platform, and if in case you were to write some code and try to execute it, we in the backend make use of Judge O's API. Yes? Like this, I can give you thousands of examples, but what really is an API? An API in extremely simple terms can be defined as a connector. Now, what is it connecting? two different software systems. For example, Uber with Google Maps, Amazon with Razorpay, Tap Academy with Jajo. Like this, whenever you have two different software systems and you want to connect them together, the connector is nothing but an API. So we didn't understand. Well, let me give you a non-technical example so that you can understand. My friend, let us assume you walked into a very famous restaurant and you want to order some food. Well, all the magic in a restaurant happens in the kitchen because this is where the delicious food is being cooked. Now, as a customer, you cannot directly walk into the kitchen and take your food. Now, for a customer to access the food which is there in the kitchen, what generally happens is you go and you are seated on a table. A menu card is given to you with all the items available in the restaurants which is listed. You go through the menu card you decide which is the item that you would like to consume. And now to communicate that, you would now be speaking to a person called as the waiter. The waiter would come to you and ask you for your order. Once you provide the order to the waiter, it is the waiter who carries your order into the kitchen, provides your order to the chef. The chef prepares your order, gives it back to the waiter and the waiter brings the order to your table and serves you the food. And that is how the customer interacted with the kitchen. Not directly, but indirectly via a waiter. As you can see, in this complete cycle of you as a customer placing the order and finally receiving your food, you can see there is no direct interaction between the customer and the kitchen. Instead, the customer interacts with the waiter, the waiter interacts with the kitchen, and the waiter brings the food back to the customer. Which means, in a way, we can see between the customer and the kitchen, the connector is the waiter. It is a waiter who's connecting the kitchen with the customer. In similar lines is how you can visualize an API. Now, let us assume Uber is the customer. Let us assume Google Maps is the kitchen. Now, if the customer wants to interact with the kitchen, it is via an API. And the API in this case is the waiter. I hope the non-technical example gave you some kind of uh, a path in order to think as to what an API actually does. Now that we understood that an API is nothing but a waiter in a non-technical analogy or in a technical way, a connector using which you can connect to software systems, let me show you an API which we at TAP Academy use regularly in action so that you can technically understand what it does. Now let's get a little technical and try to understand how APIs actually work. For this, I'm going to show you an API which TAP Academy regularly uses for code execution called as Judjo. Now please try to understand. On one end, I have TAP Academy's coding platform, similar to Lead Code, HackerRank, HackerEarth, etc., where our students go and practice a variety of different coding questions. Now, we have created an interface where we have the question 
and a person can go and type their code and now execute it. Now the problem here is, after typing the code, if code has to get executed, we need something called as a compiler. Now a compiler is a complicated piece of software which TAP Academy didn't have the time or resources to sit and build. So what is the other option? The other option is luckily there was a fine gentleman named as Herman who had created a beautiful company called as Jajo. Through Jajo, he has created compilers for more than 60 plus languages and created this into a software through which I can send my code to his software, execute and get back the result. Now, TAP Academy is a different software, Jajo is a different software. How does TAP Academy software interact with Jajo? I think you're able to guess by now, it is using a connector called as an API, similar to the waiter in a kitchen. Now, how do you use Jajo's API to send code, execute it and get the output back? Let me show you. These are the steps which you must be following to achieve this. How did I get these steps? For that, you will have to go and read the API documentations provided by Jajo. But since this is a beginner friendly video, I'm abstracting away a lot of the technical details and making it as simple as possible for you. Now, first of all, I must be selecting a programming language. Very good. Let us assume the programming language I select is Java. I'll be preparing my code. I'll write my code. After writing my code, second step that I should be create doing is I should now be converting it into something called as JSON because only via JSON I can send input to the API. Now, some of you will be like, what is JSON? Uh, JSON is basically a format through which APIs take input and give you back a response or output. Maybe I'll create a separate video on JSON. If you're interested, do comment below. But for today, please try to understand, I'll convert this program into a JSON format like this. Now in JSON, I should have my source code, which is nothing but this code. I should also have the language ID, which is, do I need Java? Do I need Python? Do I need C Sharp? Do I need JavaScript? And in Jajo, each language has its own ID. Let us assume the ID here is uh, 62, which is for Java, right? After which I should also tell STDIN, which is, do I need some input which I need to give to my program? And yes, I want to give some input, whatever input I want to give, I'll give. That's it. Now, how will you send this to Judge Osar? And this is where a concept called as endpoints come into the picture. An endpoint is a hi-fi word for a URL through which you can send input and get output of an API. And the endpoint for you to send your code is this. Again, all this is available in the documentation. Now, once I send my input, obviously the API will send me a response. That response will be another JSON, which has a single thing called as token. Now, this token is the unique identifier for my submission which means I selected my programming language, I prepared my code and I now created a submission. And now what I want to do is, I want to check whether the code which I have sent, did it successfully execute or not. In other words, now I want to check the status of my submission. How will you do that? For that, there is another endpoint. What is that endpoint? Let me show you. Now that we have successfully created a submission, I want to know the status of my submission. Now, what do you mean by status? Status means, did it execute correctly? Did I get my output? Was there any error? Was there any problem? Now, how do you do that? That's very, very simple. For that, there is a different endpoint. Now, in this endpoint, after submission, I need to put a slash and I need to pass the token which was generated for me last time. So, I'll pass it. Once I pass it and send it to Jajo's API, API will now generate a response, which is another JSON object, which looks like this. Now in this JSON, you can see it has given me STD out, which is the output of my program. It has given me an ID, uh, you know, a status ID, whether it was successful or not. And then of course it has given me a language ID. And also you can see there is something called as STDRR, which is the error. And right now the error is null because there was no error. How do you understand? And this is how the platform of TAP Academy knows that the code submitted by the student has executed successfully. And this is what I am also showing you. As you can see, the code has been typed. And if I go and click on one button called as run code, all the steps which I visually showed you now, each of this happens. 
selecting a language, preparing the code, creating a submission, getting the status of the submission. And if in case I click on run code, all this happens and it says compiled successfully. And of course, all this, if you want, you should be building this entire application from scratch, right? So friends, this is how the world of APIs work. Somebody has created a code execution engine and given you an API for that. Example, Jajo. Somebody has created a map of the world and given you an API such as Google map. Somebody has created search engine and given you an API such as Google search, right? Like that, the world of software development works on APIs. Within TAP Academy, our own application has hundreds of APIs. One API for executing code, one API for fetching the result, one API for creating the leaderboard of the students, one API for fetching the job data, so much. I don't know whether this video went into the depth of how an API works, but this video is definitely going to be an amazing starting point for you to go ahead and explore the world of APIs. If you genuinely enjoyed this content, I am requesting you to like and subscribe to the channel as it tremendously helps us. For more such free content, please follow TAP Academy and I will catch you in the next video. Take care. Bye-bye.